on pace for 2014 to be the hottest year on record globally. So as we just heard, some scientists are turning their attentions to climate change mitigation. In other words, how we deal with the impacts that seem inevitable, like a warmer planet. As well as those bubbles coming off ships, a study just published looks at another technique for artificially creating and brightening clouds to also try to reflect some sunlight back into space. Dr. Paul Connolly from the University of Manchester led this study, and he says the principle is a simple one, but this time it would involve specially built ships around the world's oceans spraying salt high into the air. The concept is to add particles to the sky, in this case sea salt, and by adding particles to the clouds, you're increasing the effective surface area that the light interacts with. It makes it more like a mirror, so it just reflects more of the sun's radiation back to space, and that causes the the associated reduction in temperature. So this sort of cloud seeding has been proposed, it's even been tried in various different ways, often from planes dropping particles to try and seed clouds in certain areas. What's the approach that you've been looking at? We looked at four different methods of generating these small particles, and we found out that one of the methods, the Rayleigh jet, was the most energy efficient. So what it is, is several thousand nozzles, and the nozzles are sub-micron in size, but they taper down to even smaller sizes. And the way the technique works is you pump seawater through these nozzles, and that generates a very fine jet. But what the Rayleigh jet technique does is eventually that jet develops an instability and it causes it to break down into very small drops. So I'm trying to sort of get a picture of what this might look like in practice. Are we going to see ships out on the oceans shooting water using this jet technique? I mean, how high up into the sky would they need to get and how much energy are they going to use to do this? The idea is you'd have a fleet of ships with chimneys on them, stacks, and what would happen is these particles would flow up the stacks and into the atmosphere. Because of the energy you're putting into the droplets, they'd probably get to about 50 metres by method alone above the ocean surface. And what would happen then is they'd be carried up in thermals in the atmosphere, and some of those thermals would take these particles into the cloud. And why do we need to look at these sort of geoengineering techniques? Well, you've hit on the point there. It is controversial for its ethical and political ramifications. This is kind of like a quick fix, if you like. What we really need to do is move to a low-carbon society. But that's proving quite difficult to do. So these techniques and similar techniques like it, we need to look at them just in case. So, for example, the Stern Review has looked at what the impact on the cost to society is of a global temperature rise of around about 5 degrees Celsius, and the impact is large. It's 10% in terms of GDP, gross domestic product. So that means you'd lose 10% of gross domestic product if you were to see those kinds of temperature rises happening. Your work looks at one very specific aspect of the the way that this could work and, and the calculations around that, but there must be wider implications we would have to think about as well. That's the trouble with all these geoengineering projects, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's completely right. So this is just one part of the problem, and we're just looking to see, just purely from the basis of how much energy is being used, is it feasible? And there are other scientists and engineers modelling the global circulations, and they're seeing what effect seeding these clouds would have on the global circulations. I mean, I think we need responsible scientists to test the idea, rather than groups that might have a vested interest in making money from the project, for, for example. Talking about testing the idea, have you gone beyond modelling? Is anybody actually doing this on ships anywhere? There is a proposal that's going out from colleagues in the United States. I'm not involved in that proposal, but the idea is to deploy some of these spray generators on ships and generate the spray on the ocean surface and just see if you can measure anything downwind. So the idea would be to use an aircraft which would fly through the clouds and measure the particles and also look down onto the clouds with satellite and see whether you can see any additional reflection And we know that this does work because if you look at ship tracks underneath these extensive cloud decks, then you do see long linear features within the clouds. And what these are, these are just pollution aerosols being transported up into the sky and then they just affect the cloud formation, so they make them more reflective. So we know it does work in principle. Dr Paul Connolly from the University of Manchester there.